Thank you for taking the time to view today's presentation and demo of Silence. My name is Jason Palm. I'm a network security engineer and the Silence team lead here at Certain. I have over 20 years of experience in the technology field, ranging from small startups to international corporations, serving in various capacities. I currently hold multiple certifications uh, with Silence, SonicWall, Cisco, CompTIA, and I am a certified ethical hacker. I wanted to talk to you today about Silence. Um, as a company, Silence's primary passion and mission is protection. This aligns with our uh, passion and mission here at Certain. So the partnership that we've developed with Silence came about quite naturally. Many of you watching this are existing Certain customers and you probably know us first and foremost as one of the premier SonicWall partners globally. We've really made a name for ourselves focusing on perimeter security and analytics. And we've often been asked time and time again what endpoint solution we recommend. And quite frankly, we've never made any official recommendations prior because we hadn't found any solution effective enough to put our name behind. That changed close to two years ago when we had the chance to fully test and implement Silence and found out for ourselves that it does make endpoint protection effective. Now, the path to achieving this protection is through Silence, operating quietly, almost invisibly. Silence makes software that predicts then blocks cyber attacks on the endpoint in real time using pre-execution artificial intelligence algorithms. That's a mouthful and we will unpack that as we go along. Um, it is true prevention and it happens all pre-execution. Silence doesn't require an internet connection, um, doesn't use signatures, and is also extremely lightweight. 0 to 2% CPU and around 30 to 40 megabytes of memory usage at any given time. Truly invisible and silent. So before I dive into specifics, I think it is beneficial to discuss how we see the whole endpoint protection industry. For decades now, everyone has been deploying protection measures only to realize later that those measures have been bypassed and we've become victims of successful attacks. This is due in uh, large part to outdated protection methods that have simply failed to keep up with constantly and rapidly evolving threats. The vicious cycle that we've all come accustomed to typically looks something like this. A vulnerability is discovered by the bad guys and then they set about creating exploits. Um, one of the most well-known and recent examples is the vulnerability in Microsoft's implementation of the server message block protocol. Etern Eternal Blue was the exploit, which happened to be developed by the NSA and then leaked by a group known as the Shadow Brokers. This was used as part of the worldwide WannaCry ransomware attack on May 12th of 2017. Now, before any protections can be deployed, we have to have a patient zero, that first computer or network that can provide samples for analysis. And of course, it isn't just a single patient that suffers. In the meantime, the infection is spreading. In the case of WannaCry, it is estimated to have affected more than 300,000 computers across 150 countries, with total damages ranging from hundreds of millions to billions of dollars. After collecting and analyzing samples, AV companies create signatures, and then they go about distributing these to their subscribers. What it really does is it just adds up to a very reactive and inefficient and slow process. And this antiquated process is well known to attackers. Um, they simply modify their code and then redeploy their attacks. Rinse and repeat. Much of what we see after the first wave of a truly unique attack are just variants of that malware. So how does silence offer protection then? Well, the best way to describe how we do something is to describe first how we don't do it. We don't do this in any of the ways you normally would think of when it comes to protection. We don't rely on human classifications. We're not dependent on a team of threat researchers to analyze files, to study patient zero in this case, um, and then try to develop a cure, so to speak. No on-premise infrastructure. There's no hardware to stand up or install. We don't require constant updates. Our updates to our math model happen maybe once a year, and that is controlled by the customer. The actual time between math model updates also continues to get longer 
as the AI simply is constantly improving. We don't do signatures. This is really the paradigm shift from legacy AV, which is largely dependent on signature-based detection. You know, we ask, have we seen this before? Is it bad? If so, then we stop it. Really, for years, um, we've had this approach. And I, myself, uh, previously worked as a network administrator, and I was responsible for endpoint protection. During that time, I worked with multiple signature-based AV products, and it really became a revolving door of solutions. I quickly learned not to sign long-term contracts for AV solutions so that um, when they let me down, which they invariably did, I could just move on to the next product and see if it was any better. Signature maintenance was also a thorn in my side. So depending on how your endpoints get signature updates, it can consume a lot of bandwidth. It is not uncommon for our SonicWall managed cons uh, customers to contact us due to network latency. By using our per video reporting engine for syslog we collect from the perimeter device, we often find that this is attributed to all of their clients pulling cloud updates for their AV product at the same time. With Silence, we're seeing quick return on investment just by getting customers back their bandwidth. I also found it difficult to get true insight into whether endpoints have the latest signature DAT file, and the frequency of the, these updates alone continues to increase. I've worked with customers um, that are polling for or pushing updates um, hourly in some cases. We don't wait for threats to execute. Um, we stop threats pre-execution. Um, no heuristics, no behavior analysis, no micro-virtualization, no sandboxing. Quite simply, all these technologies have been proven repeatedly just not to work. For example, sandboxing was relatively popular at one point, but new strains of malware are engineered to bypass sandboxes. Going back to the WannaCry outbreak, you may recall hearing about a kill switch that was discovered and used to stop the ransomware infection. Um, a threat researcher accidentally discovered the kill switch domains that were hard coded into the malware and then registered those domains. These domains were literally just a random keyboard mash with a dot com at the end. This was actually a sandbox evasion technique. Many sandboxes will simulate an internet connection to observe if a program is reaching out to a command and control server, for example. In the case of WannaCry, the author knew that if a response was returned from those fake domains that it was running in a sandbox and it would then not deliver its payload. Instead, it was hoping to move from the sandbox to a production network. The kill switch discovery was accidental, but even that wasn't enough to prevent many ransomware infections. It didn't help already infected systems, it just slowed down the infection while countermeasures could be deployed. Shortly thereafter, a new version of WannaCry with new kill switch domains appeared. And a few days later, a version of WannaCry surfaced that lacked the kill switch. To add insult to injury, about a week later, hackers started using a Mirai botnet to launch a distributed denial of, this, uh, of service attack on the kill switch domains with the intention of knocking those offline. Um, silence is not science fiction. When I first saw a demo of Silence in action, it was pre-recorded, and I literally thought it was fictional. Our director of engineering, Josh Skeens, and principal engineer, Jeremiah Johnson, had attended a conference where they first saw Silence and came back knowing it was something that we had to get our hands on. They showed me a video of Silence in action, and I thought it was some kind of spoof. Um, we obviously got our hands on it and found out for ourselves that Silence does what it says it does. I always like to ensure our customers that the products we manage are the exact same ones that we use ourselves. Since that first introduction to Silence by Josh and Jeremiah, I've spent a lot of time with the product, had the opportunity to visit Silence headquarters in Irvine, California, and I now manage our installation here at Surian. We've put our trust in Silence, which is why we're confident recommending it to our customers. So with an understanding of what Silence does not do, let's discuss what it is that we are doing. Silence has been described as the first company to apply artificial intelligence algorithmic science, and machine learning to cybersecurity. Um, although the, secure, uh, the superior effectiveness of Silence seems like the latest wave of technology, Silence has actually been around for quite some time. Silence was founded in 2012 in part by Stuart McClure. Stuart McClure was previously the global CTO for McAfee, and he is also the author of the most successful security book of all time, Hacking Exposed. In his role with McAfee, Stewart understood that 
decades-old prevention methods were no longer effective, and he found himself constantly apologizing to customers for the fact that they were constantly being breached. So he and other Silence founders began exploring a new way to approach endpoint security. The model that they explored and found applicable was the Human Genome Project. If you're not familiar, in 2003, a group of the world's most dedicated scientists completed a 20-year project to map the entire he, uh, human genome with 99.9% accuracy. Their work has led to numerous breakthroughs that we all benefit from today. This really is the same principle and vision that drives silence. So by unlocking the DNA of malware and applying artificial intelligence techniques, machine learning, and algorithmic science, silence is redefining what it means to be secure. As you'll notice, the silence logo here reflects the DNA double helix as a hallmark of that underlying principle. Um, with silence, there are no constant updates needed. Once again, this is a complete departure from signature-based methods that we're familiar with. No internet connection needed. Um, as you look at the current market and landscape, just about every vendor is now calling their product next generation AV. However, most of them are really just leveraging external cloud resources for analysis and judgment. As we'll see, silence works completely independent on the endpoint. We don't re uh, rely on human knowable indicators. The power of AI and machine learning means we are no longer just reacting to known threats. All of this means that we can be predictive and preventive, um, achieving legitimate protection against zero-day threats. Silence is simply the most effecti effective solution available. Silence conducted a roadshow in 75 cities worldwide called the Unbelievable Tour. The purpose was to demonstrate the power of Silence Protect by conducting a live cyber attack bake-off between Silence and three of the most well-known legacy endpoint security uh, products out there. Silence significantly outperformed the others, detecting and blocking more than 99% of malware samples tested. Uh, the competitor success, success rates were a mere 52%, 41%, and 21%. I actually have a, a white paper that document, documents that, under, or that uh, unbelievable tour, the process involved, some of the statistics as well. So if you're interested in seeing some of that specifically, reach out to your certain sales rep um, or your in, uh, engineer let them know that you'd like that white paper so you can kind of review that for yourself. From an infrastructure standpoint, um, the Silence Infinity Cloud is the lifeblood of what Silence does. It's a fundamental shift from traditional security methods of detecting good and bad. It's a highly intelligent machine learning data analysis platform comprised of thousands of AWS nodes. Basically, Silence Infinity collects data, trains and learns from the data, then calculates likely outcomes based on what it sees. It is constantly getting smarter from environmental feedback and a constant stream of new data all around the world. So really, Silence for years has been collecting vast amount of data from every conceivable source, feeding it then into the Infinity Cloud and extracting features that have been defined to be characteristics of the file, depending on its type, .exe, .dll, PDF, doc, etc. We are taking good and bad and analyzing at the DNA level. Going back to the Human Genome Project, if you think of it as studying the DNA of sick patients uh, and looking for common DNA markers, you may then be able to identify a possible future infection in a person that on the surface is healthy but may have some of these markers present. This information is then used to build the algorithms that are used to supercharge decision making at the endpoint. The endpoint is being leveraged to run these mathematical algorithms that have been developed in the Infinity Cloud, using the CPU to simply do what it does best, process mathematical calculations, which is how Silence is able to operate quickly and efficiently with minimal system impact. It is important then to understand that all of this is done on the endpoint. Although cloud enabled, it is not cloud dependent. Even an isolated machine with no internet connectivity using older algorithms can be proven to be effective against new strains of malware. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I know this is a lot of information to digest in a short time. Uh, it's likely going to generate some questions, so if you have questions, feel free to contact us. We'd be happy to answer anything that comes up as a result of that. Um, I do want to definitely get to a, a demo here of silence in action so that we can demonstrate and validate the claims we've been making. So in a moment here, I'm going to switch to a virtual machine that we've been running malware on. 
Um, first, I want to look at a sample we'll be using based on information found in VirusTotal. If you're not familiar with VirusTotal, it's a website that aggregates many antivirus products and online scan engines to check for viruses or verify against any false positives. You can upload samples for analysis or check the hash of a file um, to see if AV vendors have analyzed the file before and, that their judgment, and what their judgment is for the file. In this case, I've pulled up the VirusTotal page for the file that we're going to work with for the demonstration. The SHA-256 hash here at the top is the unique fingerprint for this file. This is typically what signature-based AV looks for. They look at the hash and compare it to a database of known bad hashes to determine if the file is malicious. Um, as we scroll down here under the Analysis tab, you can see um, what most products identify for this particular file. In this case, we can see by the red that it's bad stuff. Um, this was actually obtained from a phishing campaign that we um, began ran testing on. We know this is a ransomware variant of Locky, a very popular ransomware released in 2016 known as Leukitis. As mentioned when discussing infection cycles, it is now common to repackage older malware and launch it again, uh, launch it again as a variant. That is the case here. We will want to make note of when this uh, variant was first discovered. Under the additional information tab, we can see here that the first submission was in August of 2017 looks like a little over six months ago. So prior to this call, I loaded this file on an unprotected machine and ran the executable. I'm going to switch over to our virtual machines now so we can review the results of that. Go ahead and unpause this. If you've never seen a ransomware infection before, this is a common first sign. Our wallpaper being replaced with an obvious message informing us that all of our files have been encrypted. There's also a handy HTML file here that gives us some clear instructions. <clears throat> here we've got a link to a Tor browser, um, an address that we can visit, and a pin. So at one point, I believe this site was asking for half a Bitcoin. Obviously that's fluctuating, but you're still talking thousands of dollars in US money. Cryptocurrency is volatile. That number is always changing. Um, but the validity of cryptocurrency also makes extortion via ransomware even easier. Now criminals have a way to obtain payment via a mechanism that is almost impossible to trace. It's also worth noting that there is no guarantee that paying the requested ransom will resolve the issue. In some cases, ransomware is even used as a, as a disguise for disabling machines. In the case of a nation state, targeted cyber warfare attack, for example. So let's take a look at some of the files on this machine. If we go to the pictures folder, there we go. All right. So we can see here in the pictures folder, the encrypted files. In this case, the file extensions have been re replaced with the .lukitis extension, hence the name of this particular variant. Also consider that in many cases, ransomware will not only encrypt on the local machine, but will encrypt any file shares that the device or user has right access to. In a lot of cases, the first sign of infection is when someone is unable to access shared files on a network server. So in very short time, the infection can spread throughout the network. If you're unable to obtain the decryption keys, the only real remediation is to isolate the infected devices and re-image or restore from backup. In either case, the downtime and the man hours needed for remediation can add up pretty quickly. It should also be noted that the explosion of zero-day threats and ransomware over the past year have been one of the biggest concerns for organizations. For example, ransomware as a service is a real thing, making it very easy and affordable to launch successful ransomware campaigns. When you have some time, do a quick search for Satan ransomware. You'll find out just how easy it is for anyone to create their own cryptoware campaign um, and start extorting money. There are now entire business models, including customer service built around these types of offerings. One annual threat report from last year um, reportedly, uh, I think, uh, 
4 million ransomware attack attempts in 2015. Um, in 2016, that number had increased to a mind-boggling 638 million. Um, I know there's some re new reports coming out here in 2017. I expect that those numbers will either be higher or that we'll find that new strains of ransomware are the flavor of the day. Um, really, this stuff is just proliferating at an astronomical pace. And if you haven't been hit with it yet, consider yourself lucky for now, but be prepared. Even though these types of attacks are easier to create now, there are still major actors behind some of the sophisticated threats. Um, a lot of what we see now is weaponized and funded by nation states or by large criminal organizations. This has become very profitable for them and they, will, um, they are well funded and very resourceful. So now let's move over to a machine that we've protected with silence and work with the same malware that we just watched encrypt this machine. All right, I have the silence dialog box open here to the threats tab. Um, no current threats have been observed on this device, so this window is empty. There is a silence protect system tray icon um, that we can check the status of the system, um, get obtain agent information. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open a command prompt here. I'm just going to check the network status with um, IP config, and you can see that the adapter on this machine is completely disconnected. So there's no way that we're communicating with anything on a local server or a cloud server. Nothing's providing assistance with analysis. All analysis and judgment will be done by the agent on this machine using mathematical algorithms. Once again, this is a key differentiator with Silence. In order to prevent malware pre-execution, we have to render a judgment immediately. Even taking time to do lookups on local servers or cloud servers is critical time that we can't afford to waste. Also, if we rely on external sources for analysis and judgment, what happens when that communication isn't available for whatever reason? So if you're evaluating other products that are marketing themselves as next generation AV, I would get a clear answer on whether or not um, everything is actually being done on the endpoint. I'm actually going to go ahead and open Task Manager here briefly as well. We can view the system performance. So what we'll want to keep an eye on here is just you know minimal system impact when Silent starts actually operating. Now I'm going to open File Explorer. I have a folder on the hard drive named Malware Excluded, which I've exempted from Silent's protection. This is where I place any of the bad stuff that I come across or that I want to test with. Uh, it allows me to store it on the device without it being detected and quarantined by silence. So drilling down to the Lucidus folder here, we've got the same ransomware sample that we used on the other machine to encrypt it. And I do want to emphasize that these systems are isolated VMs that we've taken precautions with to prevent infection of production machines. Um, I do think it is important to test security solutions for yourself. So if you'd like to run tests like this one and don't have experience doing so, please contact us and we have a guide that we'd be happy to provide you that lays out the structure of creating a lab and testing malware. But for now, the typical warning, don't try this at home, should apply. Um, in a moment, I'm going to simply drag and drop this file to the desktop. When I do so, we hope to see Silence inspect this file and because we already know it's ransomware, render a judgment and quarantine the file. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the desktop from this excluded folder. Let me go ahead and minimize this. And as you can see, Silence is going to quickly inspect the file down there at the bottom and it has quarantined the file. And if we check the performance monitor with a glance, you'll see that the impact to the system was negligible. It's very important to note that Silence inspected that file and rendered a judgment pre-execution. I did not attempt to launch the file, I simply moved it to the desktop. Silence recognized it was new to the system, analyzed the file in real time, and based on the file composition alone, successfully quarantined the file. All done quickly and quietly, leaving the system fully available to the end user to continue working. Now, validating claims that we operate silently is one thing, but what I just showed you was the conviction of the Lucidus ransomware strain that, as we saw in VirusTotal, everyone knows about, and they know it's bad. So here's the kicker. I'm going to check the agent version here. 
All right, so this is an older Silence Protect version. And if you check the second to last line, the agent is current as of 12-5-2016. This is the device that I created in December of 2016, well over a year ago, and then disconnected. So what we actually just witnessed was Silence Analyze and Convict Ransomware that was first discovered in August of 2017, as we saw in VirusTotal, using an agent that was taken offline over eight months before this ransomware even existed. Now, I've never spoken with a customer who would be willing to take their signature-based AV, not update it for eight plus months, and then run new strains of ransomware on their machines against it. Um, silence is predictive, it is preventive, and it does offer zero-day threat protection. And to take this one step further, let's actually go to the program installation here for silence. All right. The host infinity model, this is the math model that we use to analyze and convict that file. And as you can see here, that math model was updated on 526 of 2016, even older than the agent itself. So with silence, gone are the days of constant updates. Um, gone are the days of worrying if your endpoints are connected and if they're receiving the latest signatures. So I always like to compare Silence and Legacy AV solutions to the choice given to Neo in the movie The Matrix. For any of you sci-fi fans that remember when Keanu Reeves was a super hacker instead of just some dude trying to sell websites during the Super Bowl, um, you can take the blue pill that leaves us content with the illusion that the same old protection methods are actually keeping us safe, or you can take the red pill and open your eyes to the next generation of endpoint security. Of course, there's always one more choice, um, and that would be that everybody just is excellent to one another, and then we don't have to worry about bad guys doing bad stuff, and we can all just live happily ever after. Of course, we all know in this day and age that really is a fairy tale. Um, I want to shift gears here real quick and discuss some of the, the features included with Silence Protect. Um, Silence consists of a small agent that integrates with the cloud console for visibility and management. What we just demonstrated was just one of the components of Silence Protect. Malware execution control. Um, malware execution control is at the heart of what we do using no signature, leveraging machine learning with predictive analysis and pre-execution prevention. All of this is done with no daily scans. If your users constantly complain about system degradation due to constant AV file scans, then Silence easily alleviates that pain point. In addition, there are other components that are included in Silence Protect. Memory protection. This is a key component, especially when defending against fileless attacks. We silence memory misuse, stop exploits, halt process injection, and block privilege escalation. Script control. We can take advantage of this advanced feature as needed by your organization. This gives us the ability to stop unauthorized PowerShell, ActiveScript, VBA macros, weaponized docs, and further fileless attacks. We can even prevent PowerShell console usage if you're not employing other methods to do so. Device control. We can provide control over the use of USB mass storage devices, which can help prevent data exfiltration, for example, um, through removable media. And we can do application control. This is an advanced feature. It's basically a binary lockdown for fixed function devices. The ability to control a change window makes it flexible when updates uh, to systems are necessary. We have customers that take advantage of this feature for their POS systems. Really with uh, the limited time that we have, um, I can't take a huge deep dive into each of these components. However, if you'd like to know more once again, contact us after you view this, and we can provide you with some very nice data sheets um, for each of these components. Um, really, at this point, my hope is that we've made it clear that Silence is different. It's more effective than any other endpoint solution that you've used before. We feel very strongly that in order to secure the last line of defense, the endpoint, Silence is the answer. I would encourage you to take advantage of working with us to do a proof of concept. With something as critical as securing your network infrastructure, I think the decision of how you're going to do that is not a decision to be taken lightly. We are more than happy to let you try silence for yourself at no charge so you can decide if this provides the peace of mind that your systems are protected. Um, we will assign a dedicated engineer to work with you. Our deployment team is comprised of CISSPs, 
certified ethical hackers, and they'll walk you through deploying on a set of endpoints using a phased approach. This process can be done in two to four weeks, depending on your schedule. We work to get you access to your own portal, get silence deployed, and then initially just monitor your devices so that you can see what silence finds. We then move you to an active file protection status um, and start monitoring memory and scripting. From there, we'll enable some advanced features that you want to utilize and see how those work. After that, we'll take a look at back at how silence performed, and you can judge for yourself if it meets your success criteria. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. You can check our blog for constant updates with other security recommendations. Check us out on Twitter. And if you have any questions for me specifically, you can email me directly at jason.palm at certain.com, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, I appreciate your time in viewing this broadcast and look forward to possibly working with you in the future.